Paul Simon here again. Uh, I've got a video that I want to show you guys um, <clears throat> an issue um, that is not very common but it occurs occasionally and if you don't know what the cause of it is it can be quite confusing as to how to fix this problem. Right? So what it was we were in uh, Crystal City, Florida. You know nothing ever breaks down when you're at your home uh, base. I can fly uh, Ninety-seven percent of the time here at Cape Dorado, and nothing ever breaks. And then we go to Central Florida, and then the aircraft, of course, breaks down and will not start. So I'm going to show you this quick video of uh, the starting sequence, and see if you guys can guess uh, what the problem is. If you actually get it, you're going to be a uh, pretty lucky, because most people would never figure this one out. So let's take a look at the video. All right, prime is about two strokes. I'm going to be southbound for, from Crystal River. Uh, I will make till I am uh, west of 19 to make my turn south. Got it. All right, go ahead. Yeah, flooded it. Southbound. Do it, try it again. Try it again. Is there, is there fuel running up? All right. They win. Yeah, he's good. Good. What the hell? All right, try about two more strokes. Still water traffic, 2-2 Victor is entering a left downward for runway 27, Crystal River. That's trying to call me. Try again. Okay, so the problem was a left mag failure. I would venture to say that probably 98% of the pilots that fly uh, Lycoming engines around uh, don't realize that a Lycoming engine starts on the left mag only and if that mag fails it is not going to start your right mag can be absolutely fine you're never going to get the thing to start because it starts on the left mag only right? as luck would have it I decided to do this video um, Dean was in the back rebuilding some mags both the left and a uh, to a 500 hour uh, inspection and, and uh, rebuild on some magnetos both a left and a right so uh, he has a great explanation for how the aircraft starts on the left mag and how uh, another uh, issues that have to do with how the tack reads off the magneto so let's reference those videos and take a look it's quite informative so this is left mag here okay.
So it has the two sets of points. This is the normal run side here. Okay. And then this is the start side. Okay. Now this, so this set of points is only energized for the start. Okay. And during the start, this set over here is grounded, grounded so it's out. not okay. trying to start prior to okay uh, so that way it fires past top dead center right and not 20 degrees or 25 degrees before yeah and so we just kick back instead of starting so, okay so when you set this up and get this set of points set then see that 37 here uh -huh. that means this set of points fires 37 degrees after this set of points okay which on the engine is going to be just after Top 12 center. degrees after top dead center, I guess. Yeah, or a little bit after top center. Okay. And then the start points fire at 25 degrees before top dead center, right? On a Raven 1. On a Raven, Raven 1. 1. Okay. Yeah. Raven 2, it's 20 degrees. 20 degrees, 20 degrees. okay. Yeah. And the 37 degrees, okay. So, yeah. so at 37 degrees is internal timing on the points. Okay. So, okay. I was just wondering how it would start only, a, you know, one set of points for the start and the other for the run, so. Yeah. Okay. It's through the uh, ignition system, the ignition switch. Yeah, so it's on the one, it's mechanical through the switch, through the start switch. Right. Okay, and on then the on two, the two. It's on through the start booster. The start booster, okay. All right, that explains a lot. Okay, so this is the right mag? This is the right mag. This is the, the run point here. Okay. And this is the set of points for the tack, okay, for the engine tack, which goes through the governor through controller, the governor. okay, and then shows up on the yeah, uh, controls the governor, yeah, controls so the governor. This is this is a likely cause of if you're having governor uh, problems. Oh where, yeah, uh, definitely. Set of points here. Sometimes they get a little oil on them, or they'll move slightly and and close up and not get the proper gap, because this set of points is insulated from the magneto unlike these you know yeah. these are grounded to the magneto so um you can see this insulation plate here underneath it yeah and then okay. each of these screws has an insulating uh, washer underneath it too okay and if that insulation breaks down then it's going to screw it's gonna short out the mag source more or less short out the yeah the source for the um, tack for the tack okay So then, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if this this is, screws up as well, then you're going to have not only governor dysfunction, but your tack wouldn't be reading correctly. Yeah. Or yeah. potentially. Anyway. Right. And they go hand in hand. Yeah. Right. You know, you might notice your engine tack surging up and down, and then the engine or the governor controller is going to be gonna moving be the throttle, it. trying to keep it yeah, in range, you know, either it. down or up. Okay. So, it's oh. pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Okay, so back to our trip in uh, Central Florida. So we were at uh, Crystal River, and the thing just would not start. It wouldn't pop at all. It wasn't act like it was going to uh, light off at all. So immediately I called Dean. As soon as I got out of the thing, called him and told him what the situation was, and he told me it's got to be a left mag failure. Cause it starts on the left mag. If it won't start, it's not hitting at all. It's got to be a left mag failure. Not real common, but it happens. Right? So unfortunately, the guy that uh, we did have a mechanic there, and <laughs> he was, <clears throat> I couldn't convince him that if it, it was a left mag failure. And he spent about three hours throwing different parts at it and looking at different things. And I'm like, man, if you just pull that left mag off and take a look at it, I think you'll find that the left mag is not functioning correctly. That the start points or something is broken on the left mag and it's not firing. So after about three or four hours, he finally relented and pulled the left mag <laughs> off the aircraft, opened it up, and I'll show you the broken, uh, what, what it was, was the uh, start points were actually broken, which uh, is very unusual. Start points were broken on the left mag, and I'll show you a picture of that here. Okay, so that's what we found. Uh, the points were broken. You see a little plastic piece broken off there, so the points weren't functional. And uh, merely replaced the points and put it all back together, and it ran like a top. So, again, it's a, kind of an unusual event, but it does happen. Interestingly enough, that aircraft uh, 
the Magneto had been rebuilt just oh less than 50 hours prior, so you don't really expect parts like this to break within 50 hours. Now, I've had several other mag failures, and the most common mag failure that I've had, I've had a couple times then, is a little plastic drive gear that drives the Magneto uh, can sometimes shear off and you'll have a mag failure. Um, got a video of that that I'll show you here in just a second. When that mag, uh, when that drive gear shears off, uh, both times I've had an R44, it's been at a hover. So it's high power setting, uh, the mag, you know, at a hover, engines were relatively cold, had it at a hover for about 30 seconds or so, and then the mag quit, the mag gave way. And what you get is you get an immediate power loss, and the aircraft will actually come down and settle all the way to the ground from the hover. The governor will catch it and roll it back up, and then you're back in the air, but you're at a very high manifold pressure setting there to hover. And it's obvious to you that you've had something that needs to be addressed <laughs> on the engine. But uh, let me show you that video, and I'll show you what that little plastic drive gear looks like. It's made out of plastic, so in case the gear actually does shear off, that you don't have metal loose in the engine. you got, you know, a few parts of plastic instead. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so that's the plastic drive gear there. Okay. And that's the weak point in the system. It's going to give way. Instead of the, if it was metal, obviously it could screw up the engine. Right. Over there. So, okay. So magnetos is quite old technology. Uh, magnetos were first in, uh, introduced by Daimler Phoenix in 1899. <laughs> Bosch came out with high voltage magnetos, and those were introduced in 1903. But we're operating on 1899 technology here with magnetos. So Robinson is, is going to be offering an electronic uh, mag uh, available on the left side. It's coming down the pipeline. It hasn't occurred yet. Um, hopefully it won't be too much longer. But, you know, <clears throat> I highly recommend that you, when they're available, if you're buying a Robinson helicopter, you get an electronic mag uh, on the left. The maintenance interval, uh, supposedly, from what we've heard, is going to be almost nothing compared to how much maintenance you have to do on uh, the old-fashioned mag for that to be redone every 500 hours so looks like it'll definitely be a step in the right direction to go with electronic uh, electronic magnetos uh, when they're available and get away from 1899 technology here so so I hope this was all helpful and uh, you know if you haven't already please like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video